I remember that uh, several years ago, I, I, I was here in Cannes with Maggie Chung and Chung Lee Long, Kao Fai and Jackie Chan. Uh, I said that maybe in the future, if I have a chance to, to come to Cannes again, I hope to be with some young filmmakers. So I think really the, the hope for, for cinema is let's give more chances for, for the young filmmaker. Yeah, that's really important. You've asked a very large question. I'll just say one small piece of it. I think it's very beautiful at the same time in our history, our film history, that commercial cinema has become so expensive to make and to market, which is really pushing away more smaller and human films, certainly in the United States. That at the same time, the means of production are more accessible than ever with these cameras. That you can take that, you can spend $3,000 and get a professional quality picture and sound. So there's been a great democratization of the means of production. <laughs> yes. And so that means a lot more shit will be made, obviously. <laughs> but it also means that out there somewhere, there's a Mozart who will pick up a camera and make a film and will say, thank God for Sony and Canon. <laughs> well, thank God also for filmmakers, yeah. let's put it this way. By the way, you are, you, you're about to start a, a film, Alexander. Could you tell us just a little bit about it? Just a few words, just to tease us. Are you really interested? Yes, I am. <laughs> we are, right? It's, uh, I'm making just a little comedy, a very austere, small comedy. It's a father-son road trip from Montana, the state of Montana, to the state of Nebraska. And the father and son uh, become stuck in the small town where the father grew up. And it will star Bruce Dern as the father. And it will also be my first feature film in black and white. All right. Well, thank you for sharing this with us. And now it's time for people in the audience who've listened to your words to maybe if there's any question, this is your time. A question here for the lady, front row. Um, I read recently that um, Alfred Hitchcock, when he was making North by Northwest, was very meticulous about selecting settings uh, and um, wardrobe. Uh, he, he was really concerned with making a film that would age well because he didn't want future generations to be distracted by a film that looked too dated. And I was wondering whether uh, this was a consideration for either of you when you were making a film. And the, the question came to me after re-watching uh, Sideways recently, which is almost a decade old, and yet looks like it could have been made last year. And I was just wondering whether, if, you know, whether that was really a consideration in the midst of everything else, casting, characters, you know, storyline, et cetera, et cetera, whether that was something that um, ever you know, uh, was a concern for you. Well, I think filmmakers today are lucky because uh, fashion doesn't change as quickly as it used to. You see people from the 20s who look different from the 30s, who look different from the 40s, and different from the 50s. But since the 70s, you can wear jeans and a t-shirt, and you're fine, you're particularly so, and, and uh, music. Again, music changed so much, popular music from decade to decade to decade, but beginning in the 70s, it sort of froze. But not froze, but now kids of today still listen to Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones and the Beatles and the Who as, as the modern influence still of today. So we're lucky in that way. We don't have that sense of fashion, maybe because you mentioned costume, uh, as immediately dating a film. Hair a little bit, 90s hair, 80s hair, that's... Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, is a center stage is a very good example for me, not only uh, portrayal of the characters. Uh, about the set, actually, the, the set, the setup, the setup, uh, the classic studio with the painting and the background, all stimulated by, by the old Chinese film, because they all shot, at that time, they all shot in the studio. And, you know, the environment just tell the story, but with the background, with the backdrop. So I, I think actually 
characters is the most important, but somehow how to to make this character, you know, believable. Somehow uh, the costume and the setup is the the in, also is very important layers to details to come to, to come out and make believable. Just a, 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 as a follow up to the the uh, fashion. Uh, do you work, how closely do you work with wardrobe to use fashion in a way that will help um, sort of shape a character and define a character? I can give you another ex good example, actually, Maggie Chan. Mm -hmm. That was the first time uh, she, she played a uh, 1930s role, Running You. Mm -hmm. Before that, you know, basically it's uh, uh, all in days, you know, costume and right. all that. But uh, we spent almost half Half of a month, half of a month, month, with the makeup, costume, with the art director and Maggie Chan herself. So uh, we actually after that uh, two weeks or three weeks, every single day he, she spent few hours, six or seven hours with me, right. with the art director, and get used to the changing of makeup. That finally she told me that. The, the makeup, the eye line, the lip, lips, and change her mannerism, oh. man, manners. You know, she, she start to uh, behaves totally not like each other again. So I, I, I enjoy this process very much. So each single time I work very close with the art director and the actress and actor. Can I just, one last question?